We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I am just glad to be here with you all. And uh, I'm really looking forward to, to sharing some of the experiences that I've been having um, in my homily. I've been do doing a lot of NTI, so sometimes a lot of my um, sermons may come from NTI because that's what I happen to be studying right now. And as I go back to Regina's audios to, um, to accompany me as I read it, it's, it's just amazing. Like we really are sitting like on a gold mine of just so much wisdom. And um, I did not have the opportunity during MPP to really delve into them because I was doing MPP and gentle healing at the same time. And now that I've finished it and I've had the chance to look into um, some of the older audios, it's just been really, really rich. So I know um, I'm kind of like um, late coming up with that revelation, but <laughs> I know a lot of you probably already do uh, listen to the audios, but it's been really just amazing for me. But anyway, um, just looking forward to today and. Uh, I guess we can uh, greet each other in the room. Okay, I'm just gonna read the statement of purpose, core value one. We trust everyone is led by unique inner guidance to one experience called awakening, which is realization of the one true self. We live this value by supporting one another on different paths of awakening. See, have some announcements. Join us at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Mountain Time for something genuine with Reverend, Reverend Jacqueline Eckert. Reverend Jacqueline Eckert facilitates this program in which Awakening Together members and friends join together to watch and discuss TED Talks that reveal the truth of ourselves and our universe based on the actual experience of ordinary people. Their insights are genuine, not based upon theory or dogma, and give us a man on the street perspective on what we are coming to learn through Awakening Together. Join us at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 p.m. Mountain in time for the guiding light with Reverend Regina Dawn Akers. Regina Dawn Akers uh, reads selections from books by Bernadette Roberts. The purpose of this, excuse me, the purpose of this inspired book study is to learn from one who walked through the final doorway to no self, no world, no God, only reality. Join us at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time for our Awakening Together satsang with Bonte Wimela. Anne Blanchard will interview Bonte Wimela for our Awakening Together guest satsang on February 16th at 7.30 p.m. Venerable Bonte Y. Wimela has been a Buddhist monk for 47 years, known throughout the world as a compassionate spiritual teacher and tireless humanitarian with projects and teaching programs all over the world. Unlike most monks who wander, wander in their homelands or live ascetically in monasteries, Bonte has been called to spend his life traveling around the world to teach and to heal and to bring peace to the people of our planet. To find out more about Bonte, visit his website at www.bontewomala.com. <laughs> nice. Now we're open with invocation. <sighs> if we can all just take a deep breath, close our eyes. And just deepen into this moment. 
knowing that spirit is here fully opening myself up to what is here to be said, to be shared in this amazing community. I know that we are deepening into this guidance that has brought us here. That this guidance that has brought us here is always here. There's always clarity, knowing, wisdom that surrounds us at all times. And even as we evolve as a community, I know that there is the heart that can always be trusted to know what is next, to know what is perfect for this unfolding that is ever happening. And so I give thanks for guidance, for peace, and for the love that we all are. And so it is. So now we'll have an inspirational reading by Andy Walker. Thank you. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you for asking me to read today. I'm honored. I'm going to start with uh, NTI Acts chapter 23. As you walk the path with me, things will not seem to get easier. They may seem to get very, very tough. But there is a reason for this, and it, it is an, an important one, so I ask you to listen to me carefully now. You perceive yourself as separate. I have told you that you are not. If you are not separate from anything at all, then everything that is must be a part of you. This is the only way it can be true that you are not separate from anything at all. When you look at the world, you see cruelty. This cruelty you see as separate from you. Yet, if you are honest, you know that the cruelty lives in you as a wish. It is important to note that the cruelty is a wish. For a wish is not what you are. A wish is what you are not, but what you may pretend to be. Listen to me carefully. You are not at all who you think yourself to be. The world is not what you think it is. Everything you experience is the expression of a wish. But a wish is not what it, 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 it is. In order to see beyond the wish that you made, you must take away the wish. This is why, as you walk this path with me, things may seem to get very tough. I am showing you the wish that you made, so you may choose to let go of the wish. The wish you made, you have denied, and you do not want to claim it. You see your wish as a terrible sin, and you fear more than anything to face it. But it is important for you to know that if you do not face it and let it go, the wish continues to be wished. It is a wish that you have made and it has all the power you have given it. As such, the wish continues until you face the wish and choose not to wish it anymore. Because you fear your wish, there is something you will unconsciously do. Without realizing, 
that you are doing it, you will give all that you have to avoid facing your wish. You will struggle more than you know to keep yourself in denial. But to stay in denial is to keep the wish. Denial is not what you want. Denial is delay. Avoidance is delay. Even peace and happiness in a world of fear is delay in giving up your wish. Do not be fooled by yourself. You want very much to be healed. You must face that which makes you sick. Accept it is given by your own wish and choose not to be sick anymore. Next, I'll read NTI Acts chapter 27. Following this path with me will seem to lead you to many places and many stops along the way. Each place and each stop serves a purpose. It is to increase your willingness to follow me. If you are to exit the script that is the world and join with me as a true teacher of the Son of God, you must be willing to follow me in all things. You must be willing to listen to only me. And so you will be led to circumstances and lessons that will be used to increase your faith and trust and reliability on me. Each circumstance is an opportunity to learn. If you will only give your ear to me, no opportunity is lost as I am always willing to love you and teach you. It is only this that you must remember, and then you can always decide. In each circumstance and every situation along the way to me, I am there with you offering help and guidance. Never am I not there. Never can you make a mistake that will drive me away. But it is also true that you can only hear my word and accept my help if you are willing to see that the answer to all things is me. If you choose to limit the circumstances in which I may help, my help is limited. If you choose to solve your problems on your own, my answers remain unheard. Always, I am with you able to help. Always, without exception, I am there. But you must be willing to know me and accept me in order to receive me as yours. When you are ready to give up your trust in yourself, you are ready to accept your trust in me. When you have seen that your answers do not lead to peace, you will be ready to accept peace through me. Trust does not come from suspense and anxiety. You must be willing to give those to me. Suspense and anxiety say you cannot trust. There is no peace to be found in them. When you are tempted to be afraid or tempted to worry, you must remember me. Remember that fear, suspense, anxiety, and worry are the expressions of the belief that you are alone and without me. Then be willing to see that deep within your heart, at the very depth of your soul, you know you are not alone. You know that the fear of being alone, abandoned, and helpless is an illusion that cannot be true. It is from this knowledge, this inner awareness, that will not go away, that you will find the willingness to put fear and anxiety aside. Get quiet with me. Go to your stillness. Settle within that place that knows. It is here that you will find your nourishment to carry you forward with me. In the stillness, you will find trust. In the stillness, you know me. It is also useful to remember when you cannot seem to be still 
that the drama that seems to occupy is only a script in the mind. By watching it unfold and trusting in the power behind it, you will find the peace in the chaos. You will know the joy. And in this way, you can be helpful to those who do not seem to know. Through inner calmness on the seas of a storm, you provide a means of listening to me. By trusting and remaining open to the power beyond the script, you help the script and the actors to play along with me. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I, that was an amazing reading, and um, I appreciate the visuals too. That was that was good. Thank you. So, what's been uh, coming up um, a lot for me is trusting my guidance and going to the stillness within as often as possible. Um, I chose the song "Killing Me Softly" because it just. <laughs> seemed appropriate. <laughs> um, you know, killing me softly, it's reminded me of just, you know, killing the me that I have made. There, there's like this seduction um, of the ego, yet purification is possible if we realize that there's only one purpose and there's only one voice. Um, I enjoyed Shauna's homily uh, last week. Um, so it's amazing how no matter who is having their um, week, you know, doing their homily, that it's always perfect. It's always right where I am. And so, you know, I just enjoy it so much. And I was, as I was listening to her talk about the still point um, and going into the darkness rather than avoiding it, it was just a confirmation for what was occurring within me already. So um, thank you, Shauna, whenever you get to listen to this. <laughs> So NCI talks about the many stops along the way. Um, the many stops almost feel to me initially like opportunities to go to my willingness rather than guilt, shame, attack, blame, defense, or a sense of failure. As I see the choice that I've made, it seems the first step is to realize that it is not real. It seems that the first step to exiting the script is realizing that it is a script. The usual unconscious action is all of a sudden a pivotal point at which I'm to decide to listen to this one voice. So it's not about doing better next time, or it's not even about seeing the lesson in it, which is, is often where I go. It seems that it is all about looking behind the script and seeing that it is not real. I had the experience the other day of what I call a series of unfortunate events. And I think I kind of shared this a little bit last time, <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago in one of the gatherings. Um, my children used to watch this show, which was, um, it was also a movie. I think like Jim Carrey starred in it. But we started watching a series called, it's called Lemony Snicket's Series of Unfortunate Events. And so the star of the show is this Count Olaf who is a con artist who tries to inherit the fortune of two sibling orphans, the B Baudelaire children. And he keeps showing up as all these elaborate characters in disguise. And so each time, um, none of the children's caretakers recognize him and invite him in somehow. So he steals the children, they eventually get away from him, and the next naive caretaker falls in line for the next theatric attempt to take the children. And so he's coming in as all these elaborate characters. And the children always recognize him pretty quickly each time, but no one ever listens to them. So this goes on and on. And actually it's, it's like hilariously painful to watch because you see the plot happening, but they don't see it. So as an audience member, you do see it. So my husband even says, you know, this is stressful. I can't watch this because, <laughs> because you get so involved. <laughs> so it's hard to watch this show and not get involved. And even though it's like, so ridiculous and unlike the movie the series is endless so the torture never ends it's like series after series of just you know it's endless so as i watched the series of unfortunate events unfold in my day i felt a sense of failure and self-judgment 
but these reactions start, started feeling much lighter somehow. It was like they were just a, a phantom of the intensity of my former reactions to events like these. It wasn't as though I was talking myself out of self-judgment or reasoning myself into being gentle with myself. I just had a sudden realization that it was not real. The guilt was there, but not there. There was not the, the, this self-crucifixion ritual that I usually perform. <laughs> I just had, for reasons I can't explain, a detachment from the event. The crazy thing is that I know that I did not do it. It just was not there. It was just like it was taken away. It's like reaching for something that you always reach for, and it just was not there. I went to do inquiry, and the whole thing just disappeared in the middle of my inquiry. I thought it was a fluke, but then other similarly challenging events unfolded and the experience was the same. I went into my self-reflexive punishment mode and the means was just not there. Ego keeps waiting for the thing that will happen that will bring me back to that. But so far it hasn't happened. Um, it's not that I don't react, but it's the aftermath of my reaction that seems to have shifted. It's almost as if I'm being taught that none of this is real first, so that I am more able to trust and rely on the one true voice. As I rely on this one true voice, it does not matter how many disguises the ego uses. Discernment can help me to stay in the audience and remain with the unaffected self so that I'm not believing the script and waving my hands at the screen. <laughs> the interesting thing is that I was listening to an NTI audio on, um, the, on Acts 23, and Regina talks about our wish and how what we encounter represents an expression of our wish. In other words, the tiny mad idea. Like if I'm feeling intense anger in a situation, perhaps I wish I could hate, or I have a wish that I could be afraid in a fearful situation, or wish for insecurity, or um, if I'm financially fearful or wish for, for that I could possibly be harmed if I'm physically threatened. I started looking at every stressful situation like this. I feel like as I did this, something peeled away as I started to use this as an exercise. The idea that I am not separate from anything at all is not a new concept for me, but something just clicked on a non-mental level with the idea of the wish something that made this idea of not being separate from anything click into place. The idea that all that I see is a wish. Everything being an expression of a wish and its only purpose to be let go. I fear my wish because it, I fear it has, I fear it as something outside myself, something I have no power over, something that can get me, if you will. My unwillingness to look at it perpetuates it. My avoidance of the wish leads to a complex network of deeper scripting and delayed healing through delayed release of my wish. The struggle to avoid my wish is work. Being sick takes work. What I now know is willingness is real. When NTI says nothing else is required, this is true. Healing will absolutely walk through the mob in your mind. Passing it in gentleness, leaving it in peace and quiet on its own. And that is exactly what happened to me. Sorry. <laughs> the barrier to giving up trust in myself was the belief that I am bad and that my choices define me. It was as if spirit was saying to me, what is this choice that you think you have made? It was as if, it was as if, if it was showing me that I have done absolutely nothing. 
None of my answers to my so-called problems or dilemmas lead to peace. I, I would just chase my tail trying to fix it until the next event came along. This would blind me to the guidance that is always surrounding me. Regina said, letting go of defense means letting go of guilt. Letting go of guilt allows the choice for truth. Guidance cannot be heard in the confusion of defense and attack. Suspense, anxiety, and worry have been my counselors and advisors. The result, of course, is always more suspense, anxiety, and worry. The knowledge and inner awareness that I am not alone has not gone away. Fear and anxiety seems to have lost their foothold. My guidance is to continue to listen to the inner voice and to grow my confidence in it. As I see my error, the ego's chatter regarding its meaning is faint and in the background. The ego has a spiel of its own when a mistake is made, but the still point or silence can be loud and overpowering. Then this is what my experience was like. There was almost this drowning out of the ego's conversation regarding my error. In the midst of all of this, the ego even has a plan for correction, which I was guided to ignore. The messages seem to be None of it is real, period. NTI says, get quiet with me. Go to your stillness. I had guidance to become more consistent with my meditation. My ego kept telling me that I needed certain conditions to meditate, which it made it harder for me to set aside time. Then I thought of all the things that I am able to make happen regardless of conditions and I let that go. Then I thought of all the things, pardon me, I settle into awareness, watching awareness more quickly now. I think that when giving into willingness with sincerity, spirit will use whatever you give it, regardless of time. I've had some of my best meditations when my kids seemed like they were blowing up the house beneath my meditation room. <laughs> I am re realizing <laughs> that willingness is all that is needed. Get quiet with me. That is the only instruction. All of the requirements are coming from ego. Get quiet inside and let spirit handle the rest. Willingness goes a long way. Now that I started doing this, I can see that it is nourishment, not nourishment that my mind can understand, which is why it is so nourishing. I need to be willing to let myself be shown, remaining in the self or in, the still, or in the still point allows me to see with clarity what it is and what it isn't, knowing that I do not know. It allows me to let what is expressing through me show me truth. My alarm and panic can subside as I rest in the self. Rest is an appropriate word because if I allow it, I can feel myself being carried by the self if I surrender truly nothing to do. My ability to be still is a reminder, my inability to be still is a reminder that I have stepped into the script. Becoming still allows me to see the power behind the script, as NTI says. Sometimes it is hard not to get caught up, especially when you have an agenda or a stake in how the script ends. My investment in the script is an opportunity to investigate my wish. What is it that I have a wish to experience? that has allowed me to engage so deeply. The higher the perceived stakes, the stronger my wish. If my wish can be let go, then there are no stakes. The voice that comes first is the voice that wants to avoid what I have wished for. It is up to me. I am the holy and blessed son of God. No freedom can be taken from me, not the freedom to wish as I please or the choice to let my wish go. NTI says, that my freedom is free. I am not limited by the script that I've made. I am free and I am the expression of freedom. So everything in my experience is an expression of my freedom. If the expression has become a prison, it is only because I have judged it and believed it. I would like to end my sermon by sharing with you a piece that I wrote that came to me as a revelation early on my journey. I guess I wrote this about eight or nine years ago, but I was reflecting even on an earlier time um, 
when I was just uh, struggling with truth. And it was, I was reflecting on an innocent time in my life when I did not understand truth as I understand it now. And this piece reflects on a time of past confusion as well as the clarity that arose from that confusion. It's called the 23rd Psalm Revisited. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I remember when I was in middle school and I heard this Bible verse, and it was clear to me that it must be a sin to want. If I am to follow God, I cannot want anything. Wow, how depressing. Desire is sinful, selfish, and holy, unholy. Why must we suffer to be close to God, I thought. This interpretation was in alignment with my spiritual worldview at the time. My spiritual journey was colored with shades of guilt and repression. Religion had defined God for me in a way that made connection with spirit unobtainable, but for glimpses that found their way into my mind's eye. My first epiphany and introduction to this truth was through A Course in Miracles. I had a spiritual detour through exp exploration of all kinds of spiritual literature and healing modalities. I then read this verse with clarity for the first time. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I paused and wept as though I had never seen this verse before. I shall not want, as in want for anything, was too simple for me because my worldview as it pertained to God was full of lack and longing. Through this revelation, my cup was filled instantaneously. It was a revelation that touched the very core of my being. I was emancipated from my shackled consciousness, if even for a moment, and could not control my tears. That was about 18 years ago. I'm realizing my inheritance and am overwhelmed by its significance in my life. I rem remind myself daily to release illusions from my consciousness that cloud my perception, parting with all agreements I have made, consciously and unconsciously, about my life and well being. So the simplicity of it astounds me how I can just change my mind and, with that action, change everything literally the alchemy of it all. As I look to apply this to my patients, I think, wow, that is some slick illusion you've got there. As I witness the physical nightmare in front of me, I am impressed with the intricacy of creation. It looks so real, not to make light of a person's hurt or condition, but yes, to make light of it, because no matter how one tries to distort the light, it is immutable. And I too participate in this illusion that I am witnessing. What excites me most about this practice is that the only person I have to convince is me. I am a projection of God in the microcosm, participating creatively in everything I see. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. All I want already exists. I just need to change my mind, see beyond the veil, and open my heart to receive it. What a revelation. This concludes my sermon. Um, I wanted to share a song that uh, for me the song represents our ability to change the script by not believing it. It's called I Love My Life. Life meaning that which moves me and is me. I was in Jamaica some years ago when I first heard the song. It's some friends and I kind of went off script and had the opportunity to have a more experience that was intimate of the islands, we were just driving through the hills and the driver kept playing this song over and over again. So it just got in my system and I, I like it a lot. Anyway, here we go. So if anybody has anything to share? Um. Hi Beverly, this is Shauna. Hi sweetie. I'm usually at the retreat house on Sunday mornings listening to the homily. So thank you so much for it feels like taking it to the next step for letting people know how important our practice really works. Just keep going one step ahead of the other. It really works. The way you shared how you don't even have to finish a self inquiry, it just falls away. That is what I'm beginning to experience. That's so beautiful. Um, I think what you said was something like the, uh, the way you used to react is a phantom mm -hmm. of what it used to be. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful mm -hmm. to see how that 
impacts our collective when we go completely into the ego and completely into our reactions. We don't want to contribute that to the world anymore, just like what you said in your homily, beautiful. We want to contribute as much love and peace that we can, the highest vibration that is available to us in this moment. That's what I want to contribute. And thank you for the songs. Thank you for your heart and your beautiful tears and for being who you are. And thank you, Andy, for your beautiful, beautiful reading. It was perfect. I'll let go of the mic. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. And, uh, and thank you again, Andy. That was, that was amazing. Your reading. <sighs> Anybody else? George. Hi guys. Beverly, that was, that was beautiful. That, uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed you uh, talking about uh, a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> uh, many of us feel like our lives have been a series of unfortunate events. And, uh, you know, in our heart of hearts, we would really like it to be somebody else's fault. But, you know, I realized that everything that happened to me uh, that that was a uh, what I consider to be a tragedy at the time. I actually brought on myself. So <laughs> uh, you know that's that's a shift in responsibility uh, as we look out and see this world of pain and suffering and unfairness and etc. Which many of us see the world that way. Uh, it's really just a viewpoint. And it's really not true. It's it's uh, somehow it's that wish. So, thank you. Thanks, George. I was uh, I really I really like that analogy um, because it was just the, the way that um, ego shows up is so colorful <laughs> and uh, unexpected. <laughs> so um, that was just what inspired me to use use that analogy thank you anyone else i can't see okay um Regina, or is it hi beverly this is reverend billy ah <laughs> I want to thank you for your sermon. It was awesome. It was really awesome. It was emotional. I love the song. I grew up with the song. I, I posted it, you know, and uh, uh, Roberta Flack, chapter two. I, that was, I, I lived that life. And, um, you know, I think we're all in the same place of, you know, I'm in, I'm in Florida with my wife. And, um, and for instance, my, my drama today is I lost, I can't find my sunglasses. And, uh, <laughs> so I'm going to turn it up because I've, I've been loving myself too much, but now I have an itinerary of feelings that I got to be bad, you know, and I, and it's like an itinerary. It's like a menu that I go, I got to go through. So, so, so it's going to be my sunglasses. So I'm going to turn this up today. You know, it's going to be like the drama of the day. And, um, um, you know, like I'm noticing like in every moment there is that, you know, like first I'm going to go through who, who stole my life, who stole my, my, my sunglasses. They were on the table with my, with my, wrapped with my other glasses, my, and this morning I went down for breakfast and, uh, and, and I went down for breakfast and, and I came back and the sunglasses aren't on the table anymore. And so the chambermaid did the room and, and I know she didn't take my sunglasses. Okay. 
but somewhere there's a portal in here. There's like a like there's a there's that portal that I'm gonna go that I'm gonna suspend in that moment that 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna fall up with. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go up with. I'm gonna go, okay. They were scratched. I'm gonna do a rational thing that they were scratched and all that, and I gotta get a new pair and all that. But it's even it's gone. You took it even beyond that today. You know what I mean? You got to that complete surrender of no outcome. Because in that surrender that I'm going to get a new pair of sunglasses today, I have an outcome. You know, and you went beyond. There's a portal in every moment of the day that I can be in that, like your last song, the not to want, <laughs> you know, you know, that, that, that writing that you had. You know, not to want with, you know, not to have that desire, not, not to, to, to see that, that, that I'm cared for. I got that evidence. Yeah, and I remember that. I got that evidence all through life that everything I've been cared for. I've been pushed to the next place. Not when I'm in it, but I get that. You know, and you did that today. But then you brought us to another place that was so beautiful, that was beyond anything that the mind could offer <laughs> and that's you know and i want to thank you for that because in that moment there is nothing but there you're beyond the duality and you're beyond the duality versus the the singleness of purpose you took us beyond that in that reading today you know both of them you know, you set us up with the first one, but then you took us beyond in the second one. And then in your homily, you know, we all know that you got there. <laughs> you had that flash, that moment, you know, and, and you know, like, like me, a recovering addict and alcoholic, um, you know, I, I get there. You know, I, I remember that. But then there's the other awakening after that. And you brought us there today, and I want to thank you for that. So thank you, Beverly. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Anyone else? Regina? Mm -hmm. yeah, I just wanted to thank everybody. For your sharing um really meant a lot and um i just really feel um just the connection that something is definitely happening here <laughs> thank you for watching this was our weekly gathering that we hold online for more information you can visit our website at awakening-together.org or you can subscribe to our Awakening Together channel and click the bell for more notifications when we post our weekly gatherings. Thank you again for watching.